What's up, sisters and friends? Welcome back to the Sisters and Friends podcast. Y'all, today is an extremely special day because we got some wisdom up on this couch. We have my grandma and my great grandma, Memo Joe and Two Mama. Y'all, these two women are legends and I love them. I quote them all the time on Well That's Good because they just give great advice. And now they're on Sisters and Friends. So welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Y'all both been on Well That's Good. We have been. We have. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. you're more relaxed. You're on the couch. I love it. I've spent, <laughs> I love your whole setup. Yes. Hey, should I apply yeah. the rule that you gave us to your couch? Nobody wipe your butter popcorn fingers yes. on this couch. <laughs> yes, for sure on this couch. Yes. <laughs> that and a few other rules. That you had a sippy cup right. too. You were like 12. In yeah, <laughs> sippy cup and no butter fingers yes. on the popcorn. Yes. It was like yep. not butter exactly. fingers, but literally butter. Buttery fingers. buttery fingers. I have noticed with the great grandkids, I allow it, but I go in and put a towel under them. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, so that, you know, I'm like. You okay. have gotten more lenient. I'm with a little them. more relaxed. No, yes. like the worst thing is you let them eat Cheetos, and the worst fingers yes. are the Cheeto fingers. I know. I know. <laughs> Those <laughs> fingers yeah. I can't handle. That's bad. That's worse but than that. That's not just greasy. You, that's cheesy. It's yeah, cheesy. That's I know. cheesy. You, that's but gross. you got to get to great grandkid status for that. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Apparently so. Well, Memo, you got great, great grandkid yeah. status. I don't care what they do. Yeah, yeah. You don't care what <laughs> they do. Now it's just a popsicle. It's, it's everything. That's so yeah. true. That's, That's right. so true. Yeah. That's so good. Well, I thought we could start this by a little game called This or That. Okay. And this is going to be more triggered towards social media. So this or that, would you rather search Instagram or Facebook? What's your app of choice? I'm Instagram. Instagram, Emma? I'm a Facebook. Okay. Yeah. See, I thought yeah. that would probably yeah. be the right. case. And your friends are probably more on Facebook, right? Right, right. Instagram. Because I see it as more as more um conversation, yeah. community conversation. Yeah. yeah. And, and I like Instagram, but yeah. it's pictures. Yeah. It's and true. pictures and comments based on pictures. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I'm both. I mean You're I both. post on pictures. Instagram to go to Facebook. Yes. Yeah. But then I will search to see what everybody's saying over there, too. Yeah, you're definitely crushing the Instagram so, um, <laughs> I have to say this because Memo Jo um, has come to bat with me on Facebook. She has, like, defended me, and it's my oh, yeah. favorite thing ever. So for those who don't know, my great-grandma, Memo Jo's full name is Betty Jo. So your face at Betty Jo. I remember this one time this other old lady made a rude comment on my post and I saw Betty yes. Joe get in there in that comment she section. Got her. Are you kidding me? You got to believe in Sadie's heart. And I was like, yes, Betty. Yes. So thank you yep. for going to bat for me. Um, all right. Time. This is going to be an interesting question. Um, I think two mama will know this. I don't even know if you'll know both of these terms. So would you rather film a reel or a TikTok? Oh, I'm a reel. You're a reel? I've done a TikTok. You're a TikTok famous. And I can do I can do TikTok, but I don't know. Reels seems a little bit easier for me. Really? I don't know why. You're good at reels. And I then can, I can do a reel. Memo, you're also TikTok famous. I'm, I have done she a is. TikTok She's or two. Done TikTok. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that, that, I've never went. done a reel. You've never done a reel. No, yeah. No. So my cousin Macy um, does TikTok, and she did a generational video with y'all, and it was the hi mom, and it got like millions of views. So yeah, too. you both have been TikTok famous. Okay, um, are you a like or a comment person? Do you typically just like a post, or do you like to comment? That is a tough one because I really like to comment because I do like to see social media as a conversation. Yeah, I do mm-hmm. like to see it more as that. These are friends who are yeah. wanting to know something about my life and wanting an answer to that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just don't have time. You can't comment on all of them. So yeah. then I will like. But I That's I really, good. I like to comment if I can. That's good. You know, even if it's like a heart. Or, I see that. You know, You're good at commenting. Like so. You're good at commenting too. Well, it depends on the relationship, That's I true. think. Whether whether I want to join the conversation or I just want to support it. <laughs> yeah, that's the good. Other. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, Which is kind of like real life. That's yeah. true. Because sometimes like if you're sitting on a couch yeah. and somebody, there's a conversation, you might just support it just by, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. Right. Or you yeah. might say, okay, I need to share my thoughts. That's so know. true. And that so. also depends on the relationship. And it does, Because if yeah. you have a good relationship, you want to 
like have a conversation right, right. but if not you might disagree and say, might just cool. you know, that's great that's good for you. you there you go okay this one is funny do you buy more stuff from watching shark tank or do you buy more <laughs> stuff swiping up on people's stories okay <laughs> Of those two choices, you know, mine is Shark Tank over <laughs> swiping up on people's things. But, you know, I will, when somebody recommends something on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those kind of things, I will tend to not swipe there because I'm worried about how it will go oh, to yeah, get to that, there. Yeah. Like I might look it up later yeah. or something like that. But except, you know, y'all, I trust you yeah. with the link or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I don't necessarily trust the link. Yeah, I'm the same way, though, because if you swipe up on something, like, then that they target you with those ads. So right. then I'll just, like, note it, write it down, and then go look it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same yeah. way. That's the yeah. wise way. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. you do you watch Shark Tank? Thing. Have I you do. ever bought anything sure. from Shark Tank? No. <laughs> oh, I buy stuff but from But I have bought things okay. that they have 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 bought into yeah. yeah but i wait until someone else tries it out for me <laughs> you're yeah. the way yeah, yeah. Wait, we'll wait and see what happens have y'all had a funny instagram purchase like have you ever bought something from instagram and been like well, why did i buy this uh mom is kind of debating on one right now that i bought and i think i saw it on short tank and so i told mom you know you're mattress thing yes Yes. and so I told mom about it and I said I love it it's great so I went over the other day and I saw that she had it out and I said you know how are you liking it and she said well I'm not sure yet she still was checking it out the jury is still out see that's wisdom see my age group we buy so much stuff on Instagram and we get these packages and we're like what in the world did I buy there was like a thing during the quarantine it was like quarantine purchases of just like the most random stuff. And one time I bought this pillowcase that said it was like the best for acne. You'll never break out. It's so great. So I was like, great. So I bought it. Months go by. Forgot I bought it. Didn't get it in the mail. Honestly, just one of those you click like buy. It just happened. And I guess I bought it. Months go by, I get this weird package in the mail. I think it's in like a different language. And I'm like, what is this? And I open it. It is the cheapest pillowcase I've ever <laughs> seen. I'm like, this is a bunch of false promises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I probably have had a few of those. I can't think of them right now, but, yes. you know. Okay. And then lastly, this is more just with your phone in general, but would you rather text somebody or call somebody? Y'all, between traveling all the time and being a mom to a one-year-old, we will take all the sleep that we can get. And that's why Christian and I have been loving our miracle sheets. These bed sheets honestly feel better than a hotel bed. And y'all, that's saying something because I love me a hotel bed. They stay clean longer, which is awesome because anyone who has a toddler knows that they can make a mess. And so it's nice to know your sheets are clean. Not only do they stay clean longer, but miracle sheets are temperature regulating. And y'all, summertime gets hot in Louisiana and Christian is all always hot and I'm not just talking about his looks so we need something to cool that bed down. Miracle brand makes temperature regulating bedding so that you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long which is why these bed sheets are the perfect match. Not only that but these sheets are great for your skin and feel so comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. These sheets are infused with natural silver that prevents 99.9% of bacterial growth and they're made of high quality USA grown cotton which keeps the sheets feeling soft and helps you stay fresh up to three times longer than any other bed sheet. So go to trymiracle.com slash woe to try it today. And we've got a special deal for woe that's good listeners. Be sure to use my promo code woe, that's W-H-O-A at checkout to save 40% off and get three free towels. All right, that is a steal, y'all. And Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep today with Miracle Brand. Go to trymiracle.com slash Woe and use the code Woe to claim your free three-piece towel set and save 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash woe. Okay, I have bought into the texting first yeah. thing where it's, you know, hey, are, are you free? Can you talk? Yeah. But I would rather talk to somebody. Have a conversation. Have a conversation. But I understand that in today's world, it's appropriate to text, text and then see what what somebody's doing you know yeah but like for mom i'm just gonna call her yeah you know that's kind of like yeah. the like or comment yeah it's like it depends on the yeah. relationship right yeah yeah right. kind of and it depends on the need at the time too yeah that's right. true it just the texting is wonderful 
Yeah. When you're in a hurry and you can just yeah. not take up your time or someone else's time. Yeah. For an great. answer to something. So I mean, you have to realize the whole world of that has changed so much. Because when we first start, started getting cell phones, we first got texting, it was a little bit offensive. To like, oh wait, you don't want to call me, you don't want to talk really? to me. Yeah, but not much because anymore. but now what we realize is because everybody has their phone all the time. We used to not have a phone all the time. Yeah. So when the phone rang, literally at our house there were six kids, a grandmother, and my mom and dad. So when the phone rang, that one phone that's on the wall in the kitchen started ringing. You cannot imagine the mad wow. dash to, <laughs> to get <laughs> everybody yeah. wanted to answer. To, everybody it, yeah. wanted to answer the phone because, especially once we were teenagers, because then we were yeah. hoping it was our boyfriend Johnny was calling. Oh, you that's know, that's hilarious. So everybody made a mad dash in there to get the phone. Wow. But now, because you have such access all the time, yeah. you have to know that people aren't going to be available all the time. Yeah. You know, people only also called, like in the evening hours, you know, yeah. because people at work or school or, or whatever. And then you didn't call anybody long distance because it cost money. Yeah. So you never talked to anybody out wow. of town. You know, the thing was, if you drove through a town, you had to stop and call people because you were in their town. Wow. You know? yeah. Which now... Like at a pay phone? Yeah. No, no on, or, and or, on your phone. Just your phone. No, 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 no. No, like she's if saying you like if you're traveling town. through town. Yeah, you'd get a pay phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Then you would call them while you were in their town. Because it was local. Because it, would, it wouldn't cost you any money. Well, you know? And it was very costly. It wasn't just like nickel or dime. It cost yeah. dollars wow. to call, depending on how far away you were. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Were you ever nervous that like two papa was going to call you and someone else was going to answer? Like, oh, yeah. Gonna... Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't. You know, you didn't want that to happen. <laughs> that would be that would make me you so wanted, nervous. You wanted to get to the phone before anybody else did. And then, of course, you're in the kitchen. So you hope you had a phone with a, a long cord that you could go around the corner. Oh, and, my you know, gosh. That is hilarious. <laughs> so when, like, do y'all remember the first time you heard about the cell phone? Like, the, do you remember people talking about it? Yeah. Like, what was that like? I do remember that. The first time, I don't remember probably the first very first yeah, time. I remember yeah. when the conversation started happening. And again, it's a little bit like, oh, seriously, we can't do life without having a phone yeah. with us, you know, <laughs> like because you just couldn't even understand that. It's such wow. such a new concept that you're, you're you almost thought, okay, this, like, this is, is crazy. Ridiculous. Yeah, this is yeah. ridiculous that we can't go through life without a phone. Of course, then we got the bag phone that was just like huge wow. and we thought okay there might be a purpose for it on a trip so the first time we used right. one was when I was taking the youth group on a long trip and we thought okay well this could be valuable oh it's my, in the car this could be valuable. it could be valuable maybe, <laughs> maybe. there's hope for this thing <laughs> this bag <laughs> this bag phone and so um then time went on and, and I remember my first little yellow cell phone yeah, and actually putting it to use because I was a teacher at the time and I started making my calls to parents on the way home from school because we have a 30 minute yeah. ride and I was like okay I'm buying into this because <laughs> I'm getting all my calls done wow so it, it was a gradual thing don't yes. you think mom yes it was my first experience was on a trip from Tennessee here while we were at, in Tennessee for a while and uh, a friend of ours said, I've got a new thing. It's it's a, a phone that you can take with you in the car. You know, I said, what? And he said, yeah, take mine. It was And it was a bag phone. And I took it with me in the car just for safety's sake. It made sense to me. So you could take somebody then. else's phone. Yeah. See? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we did oh that. Oh, my gosh. But you have to realize what a difference telephones, the, the telephones we have and Facebook, Instagram, yeah. what a difference in communication that is from when yeah. we were, when I was younger, yeah. much younger, and Chris yeah. was younger because of the instant communication, the instant right. feeling of community with your children, no right. matter where they were, yeah. knowing what they were doing daily, just what they're wearing, how wow. the kids look, all of yeah. those things, where before it was an occasional telephone. Wow. And letters. That was the only way letters, that you could yeah. keep up with them. I can even remember when Corey and Willie, your mom and dad, were in um, Italy during their mm -hmm. college years. They did a semester abroad, yeah. like a lot of kids do. And um, 
at that time, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, we just, we just had phones. Mm -hmm. And and they're not that old. So this has all happened so quickly. Yeah. So um, when they would call, literally, they were, it went for the summer. So we were at camp and we would all get around that phone at camp and try to hear them, you know, and talk to them over there. But, you know, it would be days before we knew what they were doing. And then they would call us with, the scariest things that had happened to them. <laughs> you they know, did have some crazy stories. Oh, they have some stories. We'll they did. And, and we, we didn't that. know about it. You know, yeah. we didn't we didn't know, so we, we didn't know to worry. They weren't, we like, just, hosting, like, here we are no, in Italy, yeah. like, none of that. There was none of that. Wow, no, they were just. Crazy. Oh, three days ago, we were on a train, and we got robbed, and blah, blah, blah. Like, what? <laughs> that <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, Memo, I want to ask you, because you, do you care if I say your age? Because you always rock your age. Well, we just told everybody your age on Instagram, so I guess you don't. She's 91, okay? So we have a lot of years in between yeah, us. Yeah, okay? a lot of years. And lot what years. I want to ask you is that I think people on social media these days, it's like it's become something that it was never intended to be for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It's become like the place where, you know, you have to build a platform or you have to uh, be liked or the place to just like whatever, succeed or be cool or whatever it is, whatever our intentions are with social media. Yeah. But I feel like you have a different perspective on social media, even whenever you were just talking about likes and comments and stuff. That's right. So what do you see social media as? Like, what to you are the amazing things about social media? Woo, my family and I love a good celebration. Growing up, there was always something to celebrate. And at every party, you know we had to have some real good food and some real good soda. And that's why I love Olipop. It is a fan favorite for my people. And not only does it taste amazing, but it's also good for you. Plot twist, Olipop has all your favorite flavors like vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, strawberry vanilla, and their newest flavor, classic grape. Vintage cola is one of my personal favorites because it takes me back to so many sweet childhood memories without all the sugar involved. Olipop is a new kind of soda and it's one of the fastest growing functional beverage brands in America, which is very impressive. It's made with natural ingredients that are good for you, unlike other sodas that are full of sugar, corn syrup, and artificial ingredients like aspartame. 90% of Americans consume over the daily recommended sugar intake, which is 30 grams, and sweetened beverages like sodas are the leading source of added sugars into the American diet. Olipop is much lower in sugar than conventional sodas with only 2 to 5 grams of sugar from natural sources. They have no added sugar, and their vintage cola has just 2 grams of sugar as compared to a regular Coca-Cola, which has 39 grams of sugar. Quite the difference. Their orange squeeze has 5 grams of sugar versus an orange Fanta, which has 44 grams of sugar, so obviously this is a lot better option for you, friends. On top of all that, all of their products are non-GMO, vegan, paleo, and keto-friendly with less than 8 grams of net carbs per can. It can even benefit your digestive health. They are so confident that you'll love their product. They're, they have a 100% money back guarantee offer for orders placed through their website. Plus, you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping on your order. So y'all, this is the best time to buy this. I recommend trying their variety pack. This is a great way that you can try all of their delicious flavors. So go to drinkolipop.com slash woe or use the code woe at checkout to claim this deal. That's drink, D-R-I-N-K, Olipop, O-L-I-P-O-P, dot com slash woe. Olipop can also be found at over 8,000 stores across the country, including Kroger, Target, Whole Foods, Sprouts, and Wegmans. Well, the amazing things, as I said, is just communication with yeah. your family primarily yeah. and, and, and close friends. It's just we have close friends in Canada that yeah. we only see once a year. Yeah. And but yet we know what their grandkids look like and they know what's going on here. And, and when we're together again, it's there's no old news. It's just all taking up where you left off. Yeah. But it's the family primarily, I think, that that just gives you such, for me, it's just yeah. such joy. Yeah. Because I know primarily what everyone's doing every day. It's yeah. just, I have one, my, one, one, one of my daughter's first grandchild was born. She was an avid photographer like your mom, your grandmother. <laughs> and uh, she took a picture and posted it every day. So when he, he was about two years old, she, my assistant said one day, Miss Joe, next time she brings that boy into town, 
tell her to come by here and let me see him. I've seen him grow every day for, <laughs> that's for right. his entire life, <laughs> but never seen him in person. That's so so it's really that's really what it gives to us. Yeah. It's a daily communication if we want that, or yeah. it's not even necessary, but still you know where everyone is at every time yeah, that's sweet. in their life. That's and that's sweet. that's pretty precious to that have. That is precious. I think like yeah. nowadays we follow so many people that we will never meet or we don't yeah. know or whatever. Yeah. And then that's when that almost like comparison game starts mm-hmm. and you want to be mm-hmm. like someone else. You, yeah. But then, but when you think about it, like communication and community, yes. like true family, right. true friends. And then there are some, you know, examples of like, I don't know a lot of people that follow me, but what a beautiful thing that we've connected or they've yes. heard a sermon that I've done. And there's beauty in that. But I think we can get lost in that pretty easily. I remember one time you were talking to me about the difference between how we treat celebrities now versus how y'all used to treat mm-hmm. celebrities. Mm-hmm. Can y'all talk a little bit about that? Just like the evolution yeah. of fans? Because like, yeah. I remember you were telling me one time it was like, can't remember it was like, Frank Sinatra or somebody who was like a singer and that people didn't freak out or they started to freak out about these people, but that was a really new thing to y'all. Frank Sinatra was was the beginning of that when girls fainted in the audience and all this (laughs) stuff because up to that point, entertainers were there to entertain us. They were not idols that we emulated or wow. followed all around the country, that sort of thing. It When we went to to dance at one of the clubs, and I grew up in San Diego, and when we would go to dance at one of the clubs there, we had Tommy Dorsey or it Harry James huge. or yeah, really. Stan Kenton, one of the big bands. They yeah. weren't there for us to sit in an audience and praise. They were there to make us happy. Wow. And I think that's where the difference was. I remember my my first semester at school at San Diego State, the, there was a brand new entertaining duo, and that was, um, <laughs> well, now I would forget that. It's one of those brain things, <laughs> comedians. Um, oh, I can't. There were, well, anyway, there were th- these two comedians that had just started out in entertainment. They stayed on campus, outside, on the yard, on campus, three hours and entertained us. Wow. Now, that was hilarious. And they (laughs) they went on to become very, very famous. Yeah. And it, uh, Dean... Dean Martin? Dean Martin and and Jerry Jerry Lewis. Lewis. Wow. Right. And they were just beginning. They were just starting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. So so it was a whole difference in the way you looked at entertainers then. And it... uh, Wow, I think and that's you, important because I think yeah. that like entertainers can't fully entertain to the fullest of their ability anymore because you could never stand out in the lawn no, for no. three hours mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. security, without no. like all of these precautions because that's people right. do that's idolize right. entertainers right. and anytime you put a human as an idol, it never turns out well. Yeah. It right. never does. And, like, yeah. nowadays, like, yeah, there's a lot of fainting happening when someone walks out yeah. on stage, a lot of screaming, yeah. a lot of squeals. And it kind of dehumanizes a person. Like, yes, it uh, does. For me, um, I think people might think it would be cool whenever people freak out over you, but it makes me feel super awkward. Like, if I'm, yes. like, in town and people are like, oh, my gosh, it's Sadie Robertson, which happens. Yeah. Like, that makes me feel weird because that's treating someone like they're not a human, you right. know? Yeah. And how do you respond to that moment when someone's treating you like you're not a human, yeah. you know? And yeah. so I do think if we, you know, can get back to some of that, of just, like, letting entertainers entertain, we could appreciate the gift they had to give, yes. you know? It's like, one of those things that like people say you can't push the toothpaste out and then put it back in it's one of those yeah. things that I doubt that we can get yeah. back yeah. to that that level but one thing that I've seen in aging artists even when we saw Paul McCartney in Shreveport a couple of years ago how humble he was and how mm-hmm. for, for me that was the when the Beatles came on the scene and everybody was crying and fainting I was yeah. in the fourth grade when that happened and it was like totally fascinating to us, you know, and yeah. um, so that they wow. probably were some of the biggest that started all of that type yeah. of fan yeah. girl kind of thing. But then we went to Shreveport and saw him, you know, now in his 70s and how humble he was wow. and grateful for his years of being able to entertain That's cool. the public. But, you know, That's there were cool. many, many years for him that were very hard because of the fan yeah. that followed yeah. him. And so um, I don't think we can get that back yeah. you know, no. 
to, to that level yeah. because we've we've raised entertainers up you as know, idols higher but, well yeah. american idol you yes, know right. still thing. <laughs> we say that yeah we say that and we live like that yeah. yes right um okay talk to me about tv because tv has changed a lot too so nowadays obviously i have every show i want to watch on my phone right here and if I wanted to, I could be watching Netflix or Hulu or Amazon or watching a movie right here. Um, and y'all could be watching c- two completely different shows yeah, and episodes. Right. But back in the day... Which is fascinating. Yeah, you had like <laughs> one TV maybe or your neighbors right. had a TV. Oh, like yeah. what was TV. that like? like what yeah. was TV. Or no TV. TV. You had no TV. Did you have a when TV? When you were a little girl. When I was a little girl? No, no. We didn't have TV. Yeah. No. Did when you have a, a TV? Girl? We had a TV. We okay. had one TV. It was black and white, right? And it was black and white. Until I was probably fourth grade, maybe. I don't remember. I don't remember. When that but came about. It was black and Did white. Did you have like a neighbor that had a we color had a, TV? We had a neighbor who had a color TV. So uh, after The Wizard of Oz aired on that Sunday night, it always aired on Sunday night, and they at the we were waiting out for the bus stop, and they told us that the monkeys were green, and we were like, "No, they're not." You know, oh my gosh, we, that's hilarious. We, didn't, we couldn't see that. We didn't know that they were green. And so, and then I don't, it's kind of like almost like cell phones for you guys, how it evolved so quickly. Then after that, yeah. I don't really remember. Yeah, it just happened. It all, it all and just now happened. We watch, but, uh, yeah, now we're watching TV, watching right. Survivor, American yeah. Idol, all of our shows. It's all of our crazy. shows. crazy. I feel like what's ironic is, you know, we built these platforms like social media uh, to connect everybody. But we're furthering ourselves away from the connection we already had. Like, y'all yeah. used to do so much together. Like, yes. watch TV together. Like, yes. even, even I know this is probably annoying at the time, but, like, having one phone that you shared, like, you can't have a conversation, like, by yourself, right. which is probably annoying. But still, like, there's still beauty yes. to that. And I feel like... Yeah. We are so isolated. Like, the yeah. biggest thing that our generation talks about is just the loneliness. Right. And, I mean, and that yeah, is so true. It's Sammy. sad. Yes. Like, but didn't, I don't know when this happened, so maybe I'm off on the timing, but when did the air conditioner happen? Because I heard someone said that they feel like that had a big part of, like, making people a little bit more isolated because used to, before air conditioning, people sat outside on their porch all the time. Fam, I know how easy it can be to grab your phone and check notifications first thing in the morning, but mornings are so important, and I love to get them started with a quiet time, preferably in the Word of God, and that's why I love the Abide app. It's an app that you can start your day with to replace the habit of checking all the other things in the world to get in the Word first. They have guided scripture meditations, featured topics to read, and it's the number one Christian meditation app. And for a limited time, our listeners will get 25% off a premium subscription when you visit Abide dot co slash Sadie. Abide meditations start at about two minutes long and they're easy to fit into your schedule and they feature topics like overcoming anxiety, managing stress, addiction, and recovery, finding forgiveness, and more. And it's also great at the end of the day. Personally, that's whenever I like to do the Abide app as well because I have struggled with anxiety. I've been very open about that and sometimes anxiety comes to me in the night. So it's really great some nights when I can't fall asleep and I'm just thinking about all these anxious thoughts to just turn on an Abide bedtime story or an Abide scripture reading meditation over myself and honestly both times I've done it I'll put on like the 15 minute one and I'll go to sleep within that time so it's definitely good for bringing peace they have stories that are based on the bible that are great for kids and adults so guys join the millions of people using abide including grammy award-winning singers church leaders and christians just like yourself get started today with 25 percent off a premium subscription by downloading the abide app at abide.co slash sadie you'll get additional stories and meditations premium music soothing sounds and more so support the show and go get 25% off by going to abide.co slash sadie that's a b i d e dot c o slash sadie to download the abide app and get 25% off your premium subscription today i uh, think that's probably true do too that. but i'm not ready to give up the air conditioning no no, no. <laughs> i think we should keep some yeah, of that things now when we lived in oklahoma <laughs> if i remember right we didn't have an air conditioner we had a ceiling fan yeah. that you could hear right. The ceiling yeah. fan work. And so I do think that that is true. And I think that just means now that's one of those things that we have to be more intentional about now that just yeah. happened because that's the space we lived in. Yes. Like when you have one TV, three channels, off those three channels, there was probably two people in the family who wanted to watch maybe two different things. So you had to agree. You had to compromise. And you yeah. just had to say, 
And generally, it's, it was, at that time, it was whatever your dad wanted to watch. Yeah. That's kind of how, yeah. how we did it. And so, um, but we all sat down together and watched shows together and talked yeah. about them and laughed about them what together. What kind of shows did you watch? So, well, Ed Sullivan, for sure. Well, uh, well, let, let me tell you something interesting. You, we, we used to watch uh, Perry Mason. Perry when Mason. When you were well, a little yeah. girl. Those same shows are showing reruns now on really? television. Yes. That's cool. Yes, yes. they are. Yes, it's they hilarious. Yeah, I just awesome. think that is so funny. That's that, awesome. And, but how lasting that is, though. Yeah. And yeah. evidently there's there's real value in that yeah. or they wouldn't be they using that time great. to put I, that on there. That's but awesome. But those same shows that you watched when you were a little girl are being there. shown now. Wow. And so yeah, what, cool. what we have to do now is like what we do sometimes. We'll yeah. you'll say you'll call and say we're watching American Idol over at Mom's. Do you want, do you want to come yeah. over? And so you have to be intentional. And we also about get that. outside, like because we all live close together. Yes. So like we'll walk to each other's houses or whatever. And I think yeah, yeah air conditioning's nice. So you get yes. in the house, but you still got to go outside. You still got to right. like see people outside and stuff. Yeah. Um. That's one right. thing I want to ask you about that's different is okay. Y'all went through like a lot of really hard times. Memo, you especially did. Like you lived through um. World War Two and mm-hmm. the Great Depression, where you, I guess you were really little. I was a, bit, I was a child. Very little, the, the, but some of it's just some really yeah. hard stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah. gosh, I don't even know how many hearts have happened throughout the years of y'all being alive and me not. But now we're going through really hard times. Like now we've experienced a global pandemic. We're experiencing a war, the threat of war. We're experiencing a lot of change in politics and all that stuff. Um, what do you feel like? is different about how people react to stuff like that now versus how it was then. Because from like my perspective, it feels like people back then were a little bit more together on things mm-hmm. and like fought through things together. And now it feels like people are like very much against each other. Like who's who's for who, you know? You're right. um, so like, what does that look like from y'all's perspective? Are you looking at me? I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm looking yes. at both of y'all. <laughs> well. And well, you, you know, this is this is really and it is interesting, but I think I think that the whole difference is is because of the deprivations that my generation and those younger than than I, I mean, older than I am, went through that gave them the resiliency to go through hard times, mm. where the, the we've gone through several generations now that have not gone through. Yeah. Yeah. A, a time when you valued things yep. that were important. Yeah. You know, where, where even um, just simple things like the furniture you had and mm-hmm. and the the and I don't mean I don't mean that as a, a status thing. I mean just you took care of things. Yeah. You know, because the, you wanted to make things last because it was hard to replace things like that. Yeah. And we we went through times like that when we we put value on people and value on taking care of what we had. Yeah. And um, n- no one since I have been married has had to go through anything like that. Yeah. And I think to, they did to, have to, more of a sense of a camaraderie for yes. the country. Yes. Um, yes. Even my grandparents, who were from the South, moved to San Diego. That's why my mother was there to work in the war effort. Hmm. And as a country, they fought together yeah. or something. Where I think you're right, Sadie, today we have so such diversity in whether we believe what we're fighting for and yeah. anything that we're fighting for. And so it yeah. does cause um it doesn't you don't have that same sense of camaraderie that well, I we've believe not they had, had we've not had anything to bring us together bring us right? as, yeah. as as one as one people. Yeah. No. It's almost like you would think that the pandemic would have because we all experienced the right. same thing. Yeah. But it it almost like didn't for some yes. reason. And maybe that's because of just social media, like 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 the social life kept going even though the personal life stopped. Mm-hmm. And so there are some things we didn't have to fully give up. Like, yes, like right. coming together in some sense, we are so grateful for now because we didn't have that for a little while. Like we're yeah. grateful for in-person gatherings. We're grateful to go to church. We're grateful to be with family. But like there still was so much hatred online and so right. much bitterness and so much opinion on yes. should you wear a mask or should you not? Should you get vaccinated or should you not? And it was like, so nobody was still together. Yeah. And like yes. and back in the day, it looked like everyone, for the most part, was like, hey, like, this is who we're fighting for. Right, like, right. they're standing on some 
common ground, you know? And, like, what's that common ground for us now, I think, is what people, um, I think is what we need to find, but it's hard to find that when everybody's living such an individual life. Yes, it is. Well, and again, you're hearing so much of the opinions. Yeah. Like I've said before, I said this to you, when I was growing up, I didn't know if the girl next door to me could sing. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that who who can sing That's in the whole true. country and say to yourself, why can't I sing like this? Yeah, like, you probably thought you were like, great. Oh, I thought, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good. I told I, her she was. <laughs> yeah, my mother said that. But so today, even though we have had this huge thing that I think even as a, not just a country, as a world, we've all gone through this pandemic is something that everybody has experienced. You're still able to read mm-hmm. so much criticism and opinions. Yeah you know, that we didn't have before. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't know what the next door neighbor believed, yeah. much yeah. less so somebody around the world. Yeah. You know? So again, we're kind of back to that intentionality about where our thoughts are and yeah. what yeah. we're focusing right. on and who we're hanging with. And, yeah. you yeah. know, how do you guard your heart in that space? Yeah. You yeah. all feel like, have you all had like, I guess, intentionality Yeah, is guarding your heart, but are there other ways to just guard your heart um, or even just like keep, value on the things that are valuable, you know? Well, right. that's it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Say, and, and I'd like to address that too. And that is that we have lost our civility. Hmm. And I think primarily because we've seen so much of that in our leadership mm-hmm. and in, in people that we look up to yeah, and that people are not kind yep. to one another. Yep. And that's so important. Because that's what kindness and civility is what brings about compromise and forward thinking. That's good. Where it's just when you don't have that, then you're just at each other right. for to gain further ground. Yeah, that's so true. Mom sent me this article uh, a few days ago, and it was like why people are losing their mind. And it was all these accounts of recently people just doing the craziest stuff. Yes. Like Will Smith's slap, of course, was in there, and a few other things where people just – Somebody punched a flight attendant. Just crazy yeah. stuff. Yes. And you're reading this, you're like, what is happening? And then I said to mom, I said, well, our leaders are so rude to each other. Yes. Like, so hateful, so rude, right. so disrespectful. And yeah. even back in the day, when I've watched videos and seen stuff, even though people would disagree on things, people were so respectful of one another. Yes. And even in just, like, relationship, Christian and I talk about this, the thing that makes a marriage great is the respect we have for one another, even in our differences, and allowing people to be different than you, but still respecting them. And nowadays, like, oh, you're a Christian, I'm an atheist, unfollow, cancel, no respect, you know, instead of just being like, no, it's okay that we think differently. It's okay that we live differently. I have respect for you. You can have respect for me. And we've just lost respect. But we have, we have not had a leader that I've seen like super, you know, like show us what respect is. That's exactly right. And that's where it needs to come from. Yeah. You follow whoever's in charge at the time. Yep. Who are you following? Which we say about in our family because yes. our our queen of everything, Mama, you know, her the, the thing the thing that she has always said to us is nothing is worth the feelings of somebody else. And so mm-hmm. she raised mm-hmm. us like that, that we treat people kindly and respectfully. And so it does come from your the leadership down and filters yeah. all the way down and still to now our, our little bitties that we're we're yeah. teaching them how to be kind yeah. to each other because that is uh, great again advice. and it's kind of back to that thing like we didn't know what our neighbors believed we didn't share all that yeah. Yeah. we just respected them for who they were that they were our next door neighbors yeah. and we were in the yard we spoke and we were kind and you you didn't fight over things because you didn't necessarily yeah. know, <laughs> know them <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true but um whatever it was, we were just going to be respectful yeah. to those who lived on our street and yeah. shop with so us at the good. grocery store and yeah. went to school with us. You, know? you didn't know. And that's you okay because you don't need to know you don't everybody's have to know. everything. No, and that's what I always say to people. Like, there is power in being vulnerable, but you also have to have wisdom in who you're vulnerable to. Yes. Like, I'm all about transparency on Instagram. I'll be transparent all day long, but I do not need everybody to know every single thing I got going no, on because it's just true. not even they don't, need they don't need to know, yeah. especially uh-huh. because if you can't sit down yeah. and have a conversation with someone and because whenever you do stuff on Instagram or social media or when it's short, there's just so much room to be misunderstood. But when you sit down and have a conversation with someone, 
you can still be misunderstood, but it's a lot harder to be misunderstood because you can talk out all your misunderstanding. That's right. That's right. But in that's what relationships are. But social media, although yes, it keeps you connected, it th- not everyone on social media do you have an actual real relationship right. with. So you can't trust them enough to put out everything that you have. Right. Um, but I love that, like that you said. What was it? Don't the humor of somebody. What, what was the? Don't that? nobody's feelings are worth hurting anybody's feelings over whatever you're doing. It's That's just good. not worth that. And I was going to yeah. say that humor has become that, so yeah. much yeah. of that. It's like things are funny when you hurt someone else right. at someone yeah. else's expense. And that's not funny. That, you know? I, no, that's not and funny. that's like Twitter. Yes. That's why I had to get off Twitter. Like I yeah. actually have a friend who helps run my Twitter account because I was like, it's so hurtful. Yeah. Because people, and TikTok too, like TikTok, it's like whoever has the rudest comment, but that it's the funniest, but it's really the rudest yeah. is yeah. the most liked. So it gets the most attention. So then people yeah. constantly are trying to, be you know as witty as yeah. they possibly can but really as hurtful towards the person and you're like this is not funny which is really yeah. not new because back you know I've worked with the teenagers for, for many many years and probably 20 30 years ago I was telling them it's not it's not okay for you to say just kidding after you've said something no. yeah you know? that's good it's just that it's a bigger platform now and more yeah. people see it but that kind of humor has always been out there. Yeah, it's that it's good. that cutting just humor kidding. that you know. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, just kidding. Yeah. No, you just you already said it. Yeah. You know. So, and it you really weren't kidding. There's something in there. <laughs> so you know that being nice and being kind is that is forever true. I mean, yeah. people were. I'm sure very unkind 2,000 years ago and today. It's just that this platform makes it so obvious Mm -hmm. to to see it. You know, you don't. It's cool that Jesus' words are the same today as they were 2,000 years ago. And he said, like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Like that principle. So many people quote that. They don't even know if it was Jesus. Like that was Jesus that said that. I was going to ask y'all, just being Christian women throughout all this time, like how have you felt like, being anchored in the word has helped y'all just remain in who you are. Does that make sense? Like, do you feel like y'all's faith has definitely affected how you've aged well? Oh, I think that's well, definitely true. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, right. And, and no, yeah. that's interesting you said that because I just read that. Really? Just the, well, it, was, it wasn't in those words, but it was those people who surround themselves with people who love them. Hmm. and support them are the ones who live the longest. Wow. And I've seen that happen in my family, obviously. Yeah. Well, it's so, <laughs> but, we were talking about that the other day because you're not the yeah. only 91-year-old in no, our family. No, Mary Lou, who's yeah. 91 right. as well, and That's one right. of your close, close friends. And then we have exactly. several other in their 80s. And yeah. um, yes. it, it is crazy. And Mom and I were talking about it. We are like, wow, that's so crazy. And yeah, like, it is crazy, but y'all also have lived such a life to be where you're at now. And you're not just here. You're like, you're fully here. Like, you're having these conversations. You're actually yeah. on Instagram. You know right. what TikTok is. You yeah. actually communicate on Facebook. Like, you're living in, like, fully. Right. And yeah. I think that's the difference. It's like aging is one thing, but to live, like, while you're aging yes. is, like, another right. thing. I agree. And, I agree. I think y'all's faith. I've well, seen it. Well, one true. thing about it, too, the other day I asked mom, because she was on my podcast, and I said, you know, one of the buzzwords with moms is this word intentionality. Mm-hmm. And I said, I asked mom, you know, when you were a young mom, were y'all, did y'all think about that word? And she said, we were intentional moms because that's just what we did. It's good. That's right? the life we have. So I'm thinking about that as you say, this being a Christian, I can't think of doing it any other way that's right yeah. that is just the way you do we it. live our lives yeah. and that's uh, the way I grew up that's and good. that's the way it's awesome I walk out each day it's, and so, so yes good. has that has my faith helped me make it to this age absolutely I can't imagine yeah not yeah. having it you because know? what I've seen is like the fruit of Jesus in, in y'all's life like there's true love in our family there's true joy there's true peace now there are hard things we've all experienced yes. hard things we've, yes. we we talked about the other day we were all in a group message together saying I'm so glad we have a family who gets through hard things yes, yes but like right. that faith has brought us together time and time that's again right. and I mean people say do you like living close to your family or people ask Christian like 
was it overwhelming to her like that she wanted to move by her family he was like i'm the one that wanted to move by her family he's like i'm the one that suggested we live there because he was like no it's like it's so fun and i think yes despite the horror world we live in the hard things we go through having that family that sticks together is like so beautiful and that's rooted in faith because we know like this world is not our home and um so yeah it's just powerful last thing i want to ask you gosh this has been so good but too mama like you are you have your own podcast you write books you um do reels you do tiktoks you're on all the platforms and like you also look amazing like, that's crazy okay like you're so sweet no that is crazy <laughs> you're like you're doing everything i'm doing and you're 69 like, mm-hmm. that is, that's amazing. And, like, so many people, I feel like when they get to 69, they just let their grandkids do it. You know, like, yeah. y'all do it. But I love And maybe I should. No, I, I was going to say, I love that you're doing it because people need my- that. Like, you know, yes. like, there's so many grandparents that come to my live original thing and they love it you know but i'm like yeah. that's awesome but how cool is it that you're doing the same thing and you're their age so you relate more like you understand yeah. and there's obviously other people doing that but you're just like so in it so like Sweet. what do you think the power is and just staying in it and staying relevant because to me like seeing you learn all these things it's so encouraging to me because I'm not scared to get old. Like, y'all make me so excited. I'm like, hey, that's <laughs> Hey, great. we'll change the other yeah, side. Hey, I, know there's, I know you also just said your knees hurt, your nose hurt, your ears hurt, and your nose hurt, and everything's hurting. And that's true, too. And I know I know yeah. there are hard things. I mean, obviously, you face loss. Like, that's hard. Yes. You face a um, lot of change, a lot of moves, a lot of, lot of all this stuff. Like, that is hard. So not disregarding that age definitely comes with very hard things. But the fact that y'all have stayed the way that y'all are, and I, I know that's because of your faith, and I know that's also because you keep learning, is a cool yeah. thing. So speak to that a little bit, to the grandmas who are listening who have kind of given up on some dreams. <laughs> uh, well, never give up on a dream. In the I, snow. That for sure. And of course, I, you know, I have to say, I'm sitting next to a, my 91-year-old mother who didn't retire until she was 83. Four. So. 84. That's right. <laughs> Correct us. So, I mean, what am I going to do? You know, I'm going to lay down and sit on the couch? No, not going to happen. <laughs> but, awesome. you know, it's, uh, I just, I enjoy learning new things. I have always been like that. And I have a mom who did, th- when we were little, my mother, this is like so weird to me now, but I think that this is just how she is. When, when I was little, my mom was a bowler, you know. So she would what? Haul, us, haul us five that. kids up that. to the bowling alley while she <laughs> bowled. And, awesome. you know, so I always saw my mom learn this. I came home from school one day and mom had bricked in the garage. What? Yes. And you still, you'll, yes. you'll still be out in your garage <laughs> yes. doing stuff. Yes, bricking well, in a garage. My knees won't let me do that anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> I grew up with yeah. that. And I, um, I'm just, I, I love to just keep learning and doing new things. And I'm grateful that I have, even though I've made my few complaints this morning about some health things, but I have a good enough health that I can still do yeah. things. I know mom's grateful for that too, because yes, that's a big part of it. So I'm yeah. just, but encourage anybody out there to just keep, keep doing what you can do. Yeah, you know? keep doing it. I remember yeah. uh, showing up to my mom's house one day and you didn't have makeup on. You had the cutest little like just lounge outfit with a little um, headband on. And you were like, Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed that you would be over here and I'm not have a makeup on. And I just love that you're like, I gotta put my makeup on. Like, yeah. and that is something I've seen from both of y'all. Like, keep putting your makeup on. Keep yes, yeah. looking cute. Yes. Keep, you know, going outside and working in your garage because that's kept y'all young. And like, I love too that y'all invite young people into your life. Like, I know when you did the TikTok, you asked one of our girls, Rachel to come help you with it and like yeah you might need to call a young person every now and then that's right and hey yeah. we sure need yeah. to call an older person every now and then <laughs> right. so y'all this has sort of been one of my favorite podcasts ever i'm so excited guys who are listening to this how cool is it you know to sit with just people who have lived so much longer than you and learn and just grow and i also think it just kind of keeps you not um just not freaked out about like where the future goes because just think about it when they first heard about the phone they were like that sounds crazy this could not I don't even know if this is a good thing and there are so many things we're hearing right now that are about to happen that are 
kind of scary, kind of freaky. Is that really a good thing? I don't know. But man, if you're rooted in faith, uh, if this world is not your home, you're going to be all right. You know, there, there can be peace in the midst of a whole lot of lack of understanding and all the stuff. But man, I'm so encouraged with this conversation. Hopefully we can apply some of the things we learned, even with social media. What if we don't look at it as just a place to grow a platform, but a place to really be in community? You know, what if we look at TV as not something we just watch by ourselves, but we bring people in? What if we stop looking at celebrities celebrities as idols, but look at them as someone who's been given a gift from God to entertain. I mean, so many of these truths we can really apply to our lives to live a better life. And as we age, would we fully live? So, so encouraged by this conversation. Hope you are too. And you can actually go follow my grandma on social media because she is rocking it. So you want to tell us where we can find you? Um, because I know grandmas are wondering what's your podcast called, your book, your Instagram, all the stuff. Okay. My podcast is called Rocking It Grand. And my uh, newest book is Rocking at Grand. And you can follow me at, at Chris Howard, C H R Y S Howard. Blame that on my mom. C H R Y S Chris Howard. Amazing. Well, thanks for being on the podcast. Love you guys and love all of you too.